Hello again, you're watching Cutler Junction, welcome back. In this video, we're going to have a look at the highly anticipated Hornby Class 87. This is a brand new model, uh, not to be confused with the old revamped Lima model that they've been producing for years. Um, this is brand new tooling, um, this is a very highly detailed model, and uh, is, uh, is well on par with the Class 50s and class 60s. So we can have a look at this and uh, see what you think. Um, let me know in the comments below what you think. Um, I'm not going to do an out of the box review. Reason being, we all know what's inside these boxes, the packaging that holds them in place etc etc. So that's pretty pointless. Uh, and I think that's just uh, there's other people out there do it. If you want to watch their ones, then that's fine. Um, but this out of the box review is just a bit of nonsense. Um, we don't want to look at what holds the local in place. We want to look at the local itself, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. Um, so we'll have a look now, and uh, you can tell me what you think. Like I said, just leave a comment below. Um, now I've had these models for about a week. Um, they were released last week, and I had these two on pre-order from Rails of Sheffield and uh, the day they were released um, they were shipped out straight away so good work rails uh, I got them the next day but uh, but you this is me just actually getting to them uh, <laughs> um, due to work commitments etc plus I celebrated my 50th birthday a couple of days ago there and my wife took us took me away for a night out um, overnight stay at the Creef Hydro Hotel which was really nice um, enjoying myself so um, I thought come back and it's time to go over these have a look at them and give them a wee run round the layout um, so like I say you can let me know what you think uh, and uh, just leave a comment below um, right we'll have a look at them ok uh, in front of us we have H7035 Robert Burns in BR Blue. This is the earlier model um, from the 70s with the, the older style panograph. Um, the livery application is absolutely outstanding. Um, it's a lot of separately fitted detail. Um, in the box you get the usual um, separately fitted detail that you can apply yourself, intentional cut ones um, H name plates and obviously um, the manual um, which tells you how to lubricate etc etc you know all that anyway so I'm not going to show you it um, it's not like you've never bought a locomotive before. So having a look at this, um, absolutely stunning model, absolutely gorgeous. The, the amount of detail um, is absolutely unbelievable, um, especially around about the roof detail here. Um, the pantograph on this model is metal and it's sprung. Um, quite similar to the pantograph that was on the Class 71, if anybody's got a Class 71. Um, so this will run under catenary wires, no problem. Um, God, I'm taking in by this. This is such a such a beautiful model. In the front of the model, um, you've got running lights. Um, you've got your marker lights at each side, and just above them you've got your rear lights, your tail lights, in the middle. You've got a, a third marker light on this, on the inner city livery it's a high intensity light um, but only works if you switch, there's a switch underneath sorry and it has a day and night time running modes and daytime you get your outside marker lights only night time mode you get the third marker light and you get a cab light inside, it's quite a subtle cab light, it's like the HSTs 
um, it's really nice and it only lights up in direction of travel so it's not like both cab lights are on it's only the what way it's going um, which is really good um, you've got a lot of separately fitted wire handrails um, which are well picked out uh, jumper cables which are all separate as well sprung buffers these are metal um, quite nice as well um, wiper blades they're all separate detail as well on the side it's the same there's cables, pipe work etc all picked out in white on the bogies the detail on the bogies is absolutely stunning um, I don't think you'll see it all properly on this camera the camera I'm using is absolutely rubbish I do apologise uh, you just have to take my word for it. I will try and hold the model up in a minute so you can have a better look. Um, you've got the windows on one side um, and it's obviously electric locomotives. It's not diesel, it's electric, but you've still got inside detail shown in these two windows. Um, there's full uh, cab detail, which is quite nice as well. Um, Separate wire handrails uh, for the cab doors. I'm just, it's absolutely stunning. Uh, the, the paintwork is absolutely crisp, perfect. And uh, the numbering is all legit and uh, neatly applied. So, what I'll do now is I'll pick the model up and I'll let you. Uh, don't know if the camera's going to show it very well um, and I'll let you see what it looks like um, close to the camera there we go, it's not the light in here isn't very good either um, but you get the idea of the detail in the bogies here underneath you can actually see the the switch there and there's I'm not too clued up about locomotives in real life so I'm guessing these white pipes are like coolant pipes of some sort or something like that I don't know if somebody can tell me what that would be really happy but as you can see there's like a bit of mesh grill over them protecting them as well you can see the switch for the, the N and D uh, for night and day I've got it set to night so all lights come on I'll have a closer look at the roof detail. Absolutely stunning. If I turn it around, if I'm dropping it. Should be quite a silly thing to do. On this side, there we go. You see some of that better detail there. It's absolutely fantastic. Beautiful locomotive. Put it back on the track in a minute. So, we'll have a look at the uh, inner city swallow livery one now, and then you can tell what you think of this one. A little compare. Okay, this one is 87010, King Arthur. Same again, same, same thing as the box, manual, bag of detail parts, etch name plates. Um, locomotive is exactly identical to the other one. Except obviously the paint, the paint is different. Obviously, a different livery, but everything else is the same except this pantograph. Now, this pantograph is plastic, which I'm really disappointed. So it just it's rubbish. It's not very good at all. So you can't run that under the the wires. Um, you'd have to have it a little bit lower so it doesn't touch the wires. Um, I don't know why Hornby done this. Um, 
it's quite disappointing actually. Uh, other than that, the locomotive is stunning itself. Um, I have no complaints. Um, this one is exactly the same at the front. Um, as you can see, jumper cables there are separately fitted. Um, the ends are picked out in orange. Um, this one has a high intensity light in the middle there, which comes on with the, the night time mode. Uh, as this the cab light and direction of travel exactly the same as the other model. Um, everything else exactly the same. The handrails, all the separately fitted details, all the same. Um, the livery on this one is really good, well picked out, and pretty accurate as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's just overall a stunning model. Has it been worth the wait? Yeah, I would say so. Quite happy with these. Um, can't really complain. So what we'll do now is, um, I'll let you see them running um, with uh, appropriate uh, rakes of coaches. And uh, like I said, you can let me know what you think in the comments below. I just still can't go over why Hornby have put this plastic pantograph on here. That is just really, really sad. Uh, Bachman managed it, no bother. Um, all the rest of the models that I've bought, apart from, unless they're Hornby Railroad models, which I don't buy really, uh, but I have one I think, it's a Class 91, um, and it has a plastic pantograph as well, and I think it's just, it's really daft. I mean, plastic pantographs, don't get me wrong, this pantograph looks legit. It looks the part, it's proper high speed pantograph, um, it's been modelled pretty much accurately. It's just, it's plastic and it's a letdown. They could have done it uh, a lot better than that and I feel like it's let this this version of the model down. Now the Virgin livery comes out with the high speed pantograph as well so I'm only assuming that the Virgin livery is going to have the exact same plastic pantograph and it's such a shame, uh, it's such a letdown. Um, Yeah, what can you say? So we'll have a look at it now. Uh, run around the layout, and you can let me know what you think. Just something I like to add. Um, nowadays, um, obviously my layout is DCC, so I'm always looking for a reliable, decent decoder. Um, and I used to fit these. Uh, these are the Gage Master Omnis, um, the DCC27 decoders, which can go 8 pin or 21. Um, don't get me wrong, they're okay decoders, um, but they're pretty basic and pretty rubbish, really. <laughs> uh, they're basic, uh, you get what you pay for. I've always said that when it comes to decoders. Um, a lot of decoders, uh, I mean they do work, don't get me wrong. What I found with these though for some strange reason, when I put these in a locomotive, my running lights are always different for the direction of travel. And I've had to arrange, I've had to alter CVs 49 and 50 I think to get the lights going the right way. Um, that's not a problem I've had with these, I've had a couple of them fail on me but nothing major. Um, other decoders I buy uh, are these Hattons 8 pin decoders. Now, they're cheap, and what I use these for is you know, like the Hornby dummy power cars, or you know, I've got a couple of DVTs, I'll use these and things like that. You know, where I need a decoder just for lighting, um, I use these. Um, and I've no, I've not had any problem with them. I've actually, I think I actually used one in a locomotive, and it was fine. Uh, a lot of people say, "Oh, the Hattons decoders are not very good." This is fine. This is really good. Um, and the other one is that I use eight pin as uh, these ones from Bachman. And I've had a couple of these fail on me as well. Um, 
so it's it's kind of annoying, but uh, I try and buy a Bachman decoder for a Bachman local. Uh, so that's how I, I always thought. That's how it's it's always been. Um, but now what I'm doing for my eight pound locomotives, and what I have done now for the last few months is I've been buying these lens standard uh, decoders. These are absolutely brilliant. Um, these are only the standard one, not the silver or the gold, and they're far superior to any of the other ones. Um, the running qualities of these decoders are absolutely brilliant. So this is what I've put now in all my 8-pin locos. Um, I have done for the last few months, and I've never had any problems with these, I've never had any fail. They're easy to program, the holder programming, they're brilliant. Um, so, and while we're on decoders, um, if you're using a DAPL class 121, 122 or a class 68, then please, that's the decoder you need. 21 pin Imperium decoder. These decoders are set up properly for the, the lighting features of DAPL models. So you won't get the full lighting features of any other decoder unless you remap the decoder and that's a bit, you know, that's a bit beyond my abilities anyway. Um, I've watched a couple of videos and people doing it and it's just a lot of CVs to change. Um, but no, if you just buy these, they're 20 quid, but they're, they're fully set up and I've never had any problem with these either. These are quite good for the, the DAPL models, so just in case you ever buy one of these. Right, anyway, let's have a look at these Class 87s running.
so there you go folks um, that's uh, the Hornby Class 87 um, I'll let you guys decide what you think of these locomotives uh, personally I think they're actually stunning um, and they're up, up there with like with the Class 50s etc Hornby have done a fantastic job on these it's just a shame that plastic pantograph on the other one if it wasn't for that, if that had been a metal pantograph, I would have given these locals 10 out of 10. I'll give 10 out of 10 for Robert Burns, the blue one there. Um, but for the Inter City livery, 9 out of 10. Because the, past, the plastic pantograph lets it down. Um, one thing I forgot to mention that, on, you know how on most Hornby models of late, or the highly detailed models, the cab doors would open. On these they don't. Uh, it's not a great, not a great loss, but they don't open that, I actually think it's better because um, it's given a more rigid body shell um, but that's the only thing that differs from the detail on the first ones uh, the other models um, is the cab doors don't open on these but everything else is there and everything is fine um, so there you go, that's the Hornby Class 87 um, and I hope you like this video, I hope it's helped you decide whether you want to buy one or not um, but certainly a stunning locomotive and I'm happy to have them in my fleet so I'll end the video there and uh, like I say just drop a comment below let me know what you think of these fine locomotives and uh, I'll catch you all in the next video thanks for watching bye bye